Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, September 15th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. On December 31st, 2007, the Central Artery Tunnel Project in Boston, better known as the Big Dig, was finally completed. It took nearly a decade longer than originally planned. On December 23rd, 2008, Guns N' Roses released the album Chinese Democracy. It, like the Big Dig, was close to a decade later than scheduled. In September 1929, the New York Transit Authority approved a subway line for 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. Construction continued on and off for decades before the first phase of the project was finally approved in 2017, nearly 90 years after it was first approved. The lesson here, friends, is that no matter how long and painful the wait may seem, things do eventually, usually, get done. And that brings us to the Big Ten's 2020 fall football season. Tuesday, the president of Nebraska was caught on a hot mic saying, quote, we're getting ready to announce the Huskers and Big Ten football tonight. When he said tonight, he meant last night. That night came and went, no announcement. Buckeye Scoops' Bill Green is my guest this morning. Bill, this seems like a good time to reassure people that we're not hearing any indication that the season isn't going to happen and that it seems more like a matter of when than if. Is that kind of where you are right now? Yeah, the Chinese water torture continues. I still think it's going to happen. I have felt that way and wrote that probably a week ago. I think it was probably on Labor Day. And I, I still think it's going to happen. I think every side here needs to come out of this looking like they won. From, you know, I know we don't do politics on our site, but there's no way around it in this one. And I think that's, that's where this is. Everybody has to look like they won here. And, you know, I don't know what that end is, Tom. I really don't. I think it's going to end that we're going to be back practicing real soon. I think the first week of the season is probably going to be October 17th. And when they get that announced is, you know, I hope I live long enough to see it. I don't know how many years I have left. And, I, and I'm hoping to see that announcement happen. And it, it should be imminent, if that sounds foolish, you know, because we've felt that a while. But I expect it any, any hour, any minute, whatever. It, it has to happen. It's going to happen. And I feel pretty strongly that the, the ball will be on the tee for the Big Ten October 17th. Yeah, I think, I think people are going a little bit crazy right now waiting on the, the exact when of the announcement. But I think one thing that's worth keeping in mind is when you look at the media people who have been just out there dutifully transcribing everything the Big Ten's PR department asked them to, asked them to for the last – couple months right you you look at them you look you look at all the people that you've probably been shaking your fist at not you bill but uh everyone listening shaking you know shaking your fist at on twitter or uh just when you're reading their articles none of them have been saying anything about a season not happening recently that is a very important point to keep in mind you know you're not seeing them talking about how october is not viable anymore i mean there were a lot of people that were talking about how it was crazy to think they could play in october none of them are saying that anymore that means something that means that the big 10 is not telling them that october is crazy anymore that's an important thing i mean you you just said october 17th that seems to be sort of be the consensus on or around october 17th i mean you're you're still thinking that that's that's viable and and you know it, seven, eight game season and, and getting them into the college football playoff uh, discussion. You think that's, you think that's all kind of on track and viable right now? Yeah, I sure do. And I think, you know, when you see the power box, the Diniches, the, the Dodds, you know, that they're not refuting that right now. And the big 10 has been really good at communicating with their mouthpieces a lot better than they are communicating with the ADs and the coaches. That's for darn sure. So. You know, the, the scheduled leaks, you know, have been pretty consistent all along. And I think everything we're seeing now, I, I feel strongly it's going to happen. But, you know, I thought Santa Claus was coming, too, until I was about 15 years old. And I used to think the Pirates were going to win another World Series, too. So um, we'll see. But I believe with all my heart we're going to see football mid-October. And I'm sticking with it. That's my story. Hopefully we are all not like Linus sitting out in the pumpkin patch waiting for the great <laughs> pumpkin. Uh, the Big Ten football season will eventually come. Uh, while, uh, while we're waiting, lots of uh, interesting recruiting stuff to talk about. Tuesday afternoon, you released your weekly bank blog column for our Buckeye Scoop members. There was a lot of really good information in there, but I wanted to focus on a couple guys in particular. Um, you and the rest of our insiders have written a ton about guys like uh, Ekmeka Ibuka, JT Tuomaloao. 
this was more about some of the other guys who could help fill out the Buckeyes 2021 class. Let's start with a guy who recently decommitted from Michigan. Um, that's wide receiver Marcus Allen. What, what should people know about him? Yeah, first off, he's a really, really good player. Um, if I were still 24-7 or scout.com still existed and I was there, I would be pushing him to be named a four-star receiver. I think he's a four-star talent. I would compare him to Jalen Harris on the current Buckeye roster in terms of talent. Um, very similar to Austin Mack, I believe, as a talent. So Marcus can play, and Ohio State likes him. He and Hartline have been communicating for a long time now. Now, do I think an offer is imminent for him? I don't. And I think the way it's kind of well, – the way it's laying right now is I think he's the, the plan B backup to Emeka Buka. I think Ohio State feels really, really good that they're going to get Emeka, and I think that's why they have not offered Marcus. Now, should Emeka commit to Clemson tomorrow or Oregon or Washington or Oklahoma and cut off all communication with Ohio State, I think Marcus Allen will be the guy. Now, if they do land a Mecca, then you start to wonder is, would they stretch and take four again this year like they did last year? Because they did offer Troy Stilato earlier. They would have taken him, even with a Mecca Buca in the picture. I don't think they would do that with Marcus. I think Marcus is a pure plan B backup to a Mecca. I don't see a way that they take both of those kids and bring in eight over a two-year period, I, I, don't think I, I don't think they need to do that. I think the talent is, is there when you look at Julian Fleming and uh, G. Scott and that crew, and then Marvin Harrison, Jaden Baller, and Mecca Buca in this year's class. So I think they would, they would stop there. I, I, I think Marcus can play at Ohio State. I think he's going to play somewhere at the Power 5 level and have a really good college career. But I think his fate with Ohio State is tied directly to Mecca Buca. You're kind of getting into a numbers game there, too, with uh, there's a lot of uncertainty about scholarship numbers and what's it right. going to look like a year from now. I mean, how, how much is that playing into them not wanting to, you know, push things numbers wise this year? I think it's definitely playing into things. I mean, there's probably going to be some seniors that are going to want to come back. But if you're already been at Ohio State four or five years and you're not ready to head to the NFL, you're probably not ready to beat Clemson or Alabama either. And I don't know Ohio State would want them back. And they're going to be in a tough, tough spot, I believe, numbers-wise, you know, if they have to take those kids back. So there's a, so much uncertainty. And, you know, this is 2020, so everything is supposed to be uncertain. And, you know, why would recruiting be any different? So we got to see what's going to happen there and numbers-wise. But I, I think – Holding the line at seven wide receivers over a two-year period, I think it's prudent. I think it's smart. I think it's the way to go. So Marcus is probably going to get caught in the wash here unless, you know, Emeka Buka goes somewhere else. But I, I, I do want to repeat, you know, that Marcus is one heck of a player. And when we list him as a plan B guy, I mean, it, it, he's only plan B because Ohio State has landed Jackson Smith, Najigba, Mookie Cooper, Julian Fleming, G. Scott, Jaden Ballard, Marvin, this is a, you know, a who's who of receivers across America. In a normal, normal year, in a normal two, three-year period, Marcus Allen would have an Ohio State offer. He can play at Ohio State. He would fall under the heading of you just can't take them all. Yeah, he, he's the guy who ends up somewhere else in the Big Ten that Ohio State that fans two years from now are going, why didn't we take him? Right, he, yeah. right. Um, so there's a numbers crunch at wide receiver. One spot where there's not a numbers crunch and there might be more of a who are they going to add to the class kind of crunch is the offensive line. Um, there's another name that you wrote about up front who is currently committed to Louisville, but who just landed an offer from the Buckeyes. Um, tell everyone about uh, Zen Michalski. Yeah, I think he's a really good player. Um, again, he's, he's ranked as a three-star right now. I could see him being moved up to a four-star. Um, based on how he's playing right now, you know, is he J.C. Latham or Tristan Lee? You know, he is not. Um, does he fit with Grant Tutan, Fryer, Jacob James, and LaRue from last year? Yes, he does. Um, so I think, you know, he's a guy that I think they would take him today if he wanted to commit. You know, they've only got two committed. They wanted four. Um, the key there will be, you know, if Tristan Lee does not come back into the picture and they don't feel good about that, and I, I don't see why they would, 
um, do they take two more projects or do they take one more project, Mikowski, and then just forget it for this year because you took projects last year and then just, you know, move on to 2022. That's going to be the key question here is would they take Mikowski and then also move in, on someone, you know, like Thomas Remack or Paul Rodriguez or Terrence Rankle from Ohio. And that's, you know, we don't know where they're going to go yet. And I, they still feel like they have a fighting shot at Tristan Lee. Um, I don't think they do. But I think they're still fighting the good fight there. So we'll see what happens there. I think Mikowski could end up in this class. And then we have to see how they proceed at either adding the fourth or passing on a fourth and moving on to 2022 for the O-line. Well, that were, there was a lot more in that bank blog yesterday, including the likelihood that Ohio State could potentially flip a five-star prospect in the class of 2021. You can find that in the insider section at BuckeyeScoop.com. Bill, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Bill and the rest of our team of insiders has been working overtime the last couple of weeks to try and keep you up to date on everything going on with the Big Ten situation, all the uh, recruiting news, all of the, uh, all of the craziness going on during this very unusual and unpredictable time in our, uh, in our history as a nation and uh, in the college football world in general. So you can check out all of that at BuckeyeScoop.com. Lots of great content outside the paywall, but even more uh, insight and analysis and uh, expertise and all of the uh, insider access that you, uh, you have come to know and love from BuckeyeScoop.com all in our Ask the Insider section as well. So please consider becoming a member there. Also, make sure you check out all of our great podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to all of our shoes right there and also leave us a five-star rating and review. So thank you guys all for listening. Have a great day. I sure hope we have some more exciting news for you tomorrow. We will talk to you then. <laughs>